On this episode of Things That Matter, Pastor Brian and I revisit sexual ethics, gay marriage, and the recent decision that InterVarsity made for their staff. Welcome to Things That Matter. It's great to be with you. My name is Josh Taransky. This is Pastor Brian Brotherson of Calvary Chapel Costa Mesa. And as we do every week, we're coming to you again with another episode of Things That Matter. If you're watching on YouTube, Facebook, or Twitter, we'd love to hear from you. Leave us a comment or a question. Maybe it'll make its way into a future broadcast. There's also the podcast. Check that out. Pastor Brian, it's good to be back with you. Yep. Josh, great to be here. So let's return to the uh, topic of sexual ethics. This has recently been in the news. Uh, it kind of came about through InterVarsity making uh, some final decisions on um, a, a white paper that it produced and its employment. And there's a number of, of kind of factors, of four years of history, really. Yeah. But it got into the mainstream media through a Times article yeah. kind of um, explaining it and... Uh, it took on a life of its own. Yeah, yeah. So InterVarsity um, USA, which is a campus ministry and also a, pu a publishing house, um, they decided to kind of draw a line in the sand, if you will. And they basically said any employee that was uh, in agreement with same-sex marriage uh, would be um, terminated. Right. And they, uh, they asked the employees themselves to be honest and to just come forth with their feelings because they, they kind of laid out a new um, a statement of faith, sort of, you know, that you have to abide by to be part of the organization. And so they asked them, you know, to come forth, be honest, and they would, you know, terminate them. They would help them with a, you know, severance package and, you know, mm -hmm. try to help them move on into something else. And uh, all which sounded, you know, perfectly understandable and legitimate from the standpoint of this is an evangelical organization. This is a solid, uh, biblically based ministry. The Bible is very clear on the issue of homosexuality and same-sex relations and same-sex marriage. Uh, but the thing that really astounded me, Josh, was the 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 pushback from some people within the kind of the broader evangelical community. You know, mm -hmm. I saw some things like, you know, oh, how shocking and, oh, unbelievable and, you know, how cruel and, you know, it was just really uh, interesting to see the the response yes. of some people who identify themselves as evangelical but somehow think that um, same-sex relations and same-sex marriage is uh, perfectly fine. Yeah, it's bizarre. It, watching the pushback and the response from both Supposedly evangelical Christians, and then people who are who are just watching from afar, yep. seeing the title, and responding. It would be almost as if InterVarsity was writing a new sexual ethic yep. and introducing a new standard that the church hasn't held for yep. two thousand years. Yeah, and and some have argued against them, saying, "Well, you know, th this is a." this is something new. Why are they putting this out now? Well, it's, it's not anything new. It's something that they've held to from the inception because it's, it's, it's biblically sound doctrine. But because of the current you know, cultural situation and the push from the culture to embrace same-sex relations, they had to come out with a definitive statement. And, you know, Josh, when you look at the, the different creeds and things that have come down throughout history, generally speaking, the creeds are always in response mm -hmm to something that's pushing against orthodoxy, and that's what's happening here. So yeah. it's not they haven't written a creed, but you know they're addressing this now in their statement of faith where maybe they previously hadn't done that because there wasn't a need to do it because everybody understood that the Bible was you know, clear on this topic. But now that there's this ambiguity in the minds of some people, some people saying, well, you know, we've been misreading the scriptures for all these years. You know, the Bible doesn't really condemn um, these relationships. As a matter of fact, one of the uh, persons that was, um, you know, going to be relieved of her role at InterVarsity, uh, she said, you know, that, that she was very much committed to the Bible, just as InterVarsity had always taught. And from her study of Scripture, she had come to the conclusion that same-sex relations were were fine, and, you know, same-sex same, same -sex marriage was something that God yeah. blessed. So, you know, I wonder, well, how, how do people come to those conclusions? You know, I think the only way you can come to that conclusion is misinterpret the text and try to say that, 
well, it wasn't, you know, those, those ancient biblical texts aren't talking about homosexuality the way we think of it today. They're talking about it in the sense of uh, promiscuity and prostitution and, you know, um, all of that sort of thing. But we're talking about loving relationships. And yep. so, and of course, Jesus, the highest priority with Jesus was to love. So if you love each other, whether you're, you know, heterosexual or homosexual, all that really matters is that you love each other and then, you know, God God approves of yeah. that. And the part that people have found unloving about this decision that InterVarsity has, has made is the aspect that people are going to be terminated. Yeah. And they've some have suggested, well, this is something that we can agree to disagree on. Yeah. Is that the case with homosexuality and gay marriage? And, and that, yeah, and that, that is an idea that is spreading throughout the Christian community. And I know people who actually think that way. Well, this, is, this isn't one of those break fellowship uh, issues. This is one of those things where, you know, you feel this way about it. I feel this way about it. We still love Jesus. We're still believers. Let's just, you know, agree to disagree agreeably and let's move forward. But I, I personally don't think it's one of those kinds of issues. Now, obviously, we, we want to maintain, you know, love and grace toward people, but we, we can't um, back off and say, well, you know, no, this isn't, this isn't a real, you know, major serious uh, doctrinal issue. I think it really is because you're, you're going against the, the grain and the fabric of Scripture uh, not only the the actual texts that deal with the subject of same-sex relations, always in a condemning manner, but you, just the very fra- fabric of uh, the biblical narrative about life. It's all goes back to Genesis. You know, God made them male and female, and that thread runs entirely through the Scripture. So uh, you've got the, the scriptures, you've got the, the tradition of the church, the 2,000 years of tradition. Everybody's always seen it the same way. So um, I think that you, you have to hold on to what um, the church has believed and what the, what the Bible teaches. And it's, an, it's really, uh, it's not a negotiable thing, really, in my mind. You know, you, you can't, I personally cannot partner with, minister alongside of, uh, those who are going to embrace that and hold that view, because I think essentially you're 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 condoning sinful behavior, and the thing that people aren't thinking about is you're you're actually uh, contributing to the the to the destruction of the person rather right. than the you know salvation and deliverance yeah. of the person. Now there may be some that are watching this and hearing you say this, and they're like, "But aren't you the one that wrote that article yeah. on CalvaryChapel.com about?" That it may be okay to attend yeah. a gay wedding. Yeah. How how do you distinguish between a hard and fast? No, we're going to break fellowship with uh, employment lines. Yeah. And being okay with attending a gay wedding. Yeah. Because as I pointed out in the article several months ago, or maybe even more than a year ago, when I wrote the article, that your attendance at the wedding is not a condoning of the wedding. You're you're there for the bigger purpose of. Um, being there to catch people when they fall, speaking uh, God's truth into their life, you're not you're not there, you know, cheering them on, saying, "Man, we're we're so happy that you're married, and we're you know just you know um, right. you know we're we're wishing you well and all of that." You know, we're we're not doing that. We're we're talking about situations, difficult, challenging situations, where even a situation that I personally was involved in to some extent. Uh, where a, a family member was really perplexed as to whether they could go to another family member's gay wedding, they felt the Lord was leading them to go. The family that invited them to the wedding, thinking surely they wouldn't come, knows completely their position, knows that they are uh, not in favor of this, knows that as a Christian they believe that this is sinful, but they wanted them to come anyway. And so this person had to wrestle through this and in the end, you know, felt that the Lord was saying, I want you to go be a light shining in the darkness. So to me, they're, they're apples and oranges. They're yeah. two different things. Yeah. Now let's go back to InterVarsity as an example for a second. This must have been a really difficult leadership process, but it seems like the way that this was rolled out gave plenty of time for people on their own, employees on their own, to process through this. They developed a 20-page paper. They issued this paper to the organization. They said, yeah. we want feedback over the next 18 months. Yeah. And then they ultimately said, you don't even, I don't even, you didn't have to sign it. Yeah. 
It was right. just more of disclose on your on your own, yeah. based on integrity, whether or not you agree with it. So um, that seems to be a bit in contrast to what we saw uh, maybe a year ago with World Vision, where they kind of they said we're going to allow yeah. gay couples yeah. to serve on staff, and then yeah. they had to retract it. And that decision it. lasted forty eight hours. Yeah, after they lost ten thousand yeah. uh, child sponsors. So. Right. Yeah. Um, so you feel comfortable with the way that this was handled? I, I think they handled it amazingly, sensitively. I think they were very gracious. Uh, you know, I mean, look, this is um, you know, this is the this is the world encroaching upon the church. This is the world trying to force the church into a position, and unfortunately, there are Christians that are capitulating, and that that's what's happening here. So the church has has always been on this side of the issue. It, recognizing that this is wrong, it's sinful behavior. It's not the the worst sin. It's not the unpardonable sin. It's you know people of course can be saved just like anybody else. It's not uh, you know some extraordinary kind of a case, but but it but it is sin. And uh, you know some people have said, well, you know what's the difference between um, this and divorce? Well, you know divorce, even though it's forbidden in Scripture, there are occasions in scripture where divorce is allowed because right. there are certain circumstances. There's no case in scripture whatsoever where there's any compromise or allowance of same-sex relationships. Now, when I say same-sex relationships, I'm not talking about people who uh, struggle with feelings of same-sex attraction. That's not what we're talking about because that, of course, is is a battle that many people have. And the solution to that battle is to you know, seek God's grace. And if you, you know, if, if you're just going to struggle with it, then you're going to struggle with it and you're going to live a celibate life. And, you know, many people who have come out of the gay lifestyle have understood that and that's what they've committed to doing. And so, um, but what, what, what we're talking about here is just a blatant um, contradiction of, of the clear scriptural teaching on sexual relationships and on marriage as well. Yeah. So it shouldn't be a scandal to take uh, what has been the church's view and interpretation of the Bible for 2,000 years yeah. and to put it into a 20-page white paper and express it. You feel like that's, that's completely yeah, within balance. Yeah, it shouldn't be a scandal at all. Now, of course, in the climate that we're living in, in the world that we live in, in the culture that we live in, of course, uh, the, uh, I mean, you, you, you would obviously expect um, the liberal progressive culture to latch onto this and to just say, oh, look at these Christians, you know, they're doing it again. But the problem is not with them, because that's expected, like I said, the problem right. is with those within the church who are seeing this as problematic. And yep. I think that's that shows that we've got, you know, a, a real um, issue of, author you know, uh, of disrespect of biblical authority because that's what it comes back down to. Yep. Us crazy Christians believe the Bible is authoritative. Huh? <laughs> yeah. Yep. Yeah, we do. <laughs> well, we appreciate you tuning in to another episode of Things That Matter. We'd love to hear from you and stay posted for more episodes next week and the following week after that. You can check out the podcast as well on your favorite podcasting app. Just search for Things That Matter and we'd love to hear from you. God bless. <laughs>